What's up, world, and welcome to this special edition of the All Real Show. Today we're going to talk a little bit with my man Tio. He's over near Barcelona, Spain. Um, he's in the lockdown. They've been locked down for about 10 days now, right, Tio? Yeah, I think more than 10 days. Uh I think 11, 12 days. I see. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna talk with him, though, and get a little insight into what a lockdown actually pertains, I mean, other than some of the obvious stuff, and try to give everybody a better idea, because if it happens in the U.S. or any of these other countries where the, if the rates keep going up of um, infected, it's definitely going to happen. So it's good to know what to expect and, you know, how to prep or prepare or whatever. So, T.O., first, I just want to thank you real quick, man, for being here, uh, taking your time to do it. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, what, What? I mean, obviously, it's a lockdown, but get, can you give us a general idea of, I mean, what happens, They like how they tell you, and then what, what kicks in? Yeah, for, for us here, it's a bit different than, let's say, for Spanish citizens, because I'm a resident here, I don't quite follow the local news or I'm not ingrained into this mm -hmm. culture so probably it's different for for them in terms of like how they know about right. this I just knew about this because I read international news from like I don't know from Al Jazeera to BBC to whatever I got you so we we found out that they will close down we expected that because Italy did it so Spain had lots and lots of new in infections and it was normal for, for them to do that and uh, I think I remember it was something like they were close from day and then we we're like okay let's go out before they close so we we just go for a walk like we usually do and then we start to see uh, police cars you know more and more and then we realized when we came back that actually they they closed that day because it was so bad it was getting so bad that they had to rush with the the closure right. whatever whatever that means because it can differ from country to country what the lockdown means. right in spain it's, it's a bit more tough than the other countries I, as far as i, I understood mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As far as finding out, I asked that out of curiosity, but something like that is going to be plastered on local news, international news. So, yeah, I, I guess you would find out one way or the other. Um, so, what what, um, what businesses are open? Yeah, so they say uh, that only essential businesses are open. Mm -hmm. That means, of course, it's it's a bit funny because in this world you realize that only a few businesses are essential actually those that provide the food and those that provide Very the medicine true. and transportation yep. and that's how it is here just pharmacies and and the supermarkets and the transportation even transportation is you cannot a bus cannot be more than 50 percent full at the time sometimes i've seen police staying at a bus station so probably don't let more than 50 percent of the bus to be full at the time okay, yeah so basically uh, kind of to be expected like you you said that the only thing open is grocery stores pharmacies and tra limited transportation and that's of course controlled because people got a bit freaked out and started to buy like toilet paper and we've been to to shops and like i can tell you what spanish people like they like toilet paper rice <laughs> <laughs> and what else, man? Something like that. You can see that those shelves are empty. Right. And the other ones are just, no one touches the vegetables that much. <laughs> right. Yeah, don't get me started on the toilet paper thing, man. I don't I don't understand that shit at all. I don't, I don't have any idea. That has nothing to do with the virus. I'm not sure. No. I, I think that's just a, something that started and people just followed suit for no reason. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no. Because it's uh, again, it's it's open. Like um, supermarkets will be open because they have to. Imagine if that would not be the case. They even the government understands that it would be really bad. Of course, so you need that. And the the big question I think here, people kind of assume that, like you said, obviously they have to leave them open, or people are just going to go loot because if people aren't going to starve to death. So, but the bigger question I think is. Because obviously it's happening everywhere in the world. People are panicking and they're buying all the food up. Um, so how has that worked for you so far as far as when you can go and how many people can go and how do they control that with the grocery stores? Uh, the thing is that we live in a very small town and it's usually extremely like, or empty here. Like eight months of every year, it's, it's almost no one here. So you couldn't even, maybe you, you cannot even tell that right. it's... Is you know a, a lockdown, but though of course it, it's it's quite it's obvious because you see people with masks, you right. see all kinds of restrictions and so forth. 
So as far as we understood, and it's a bit tricky for us here in Spain, because as I said, we don't quite understand Spanish, we are, don't follow the local news right. and so forth. For you, it'll be different in US, because you can read PBS or whatever news outlet and you understand much better. You can see, you know, the officials, what they are saying. But what you understand here is that uh, you are not allowed to go out under any circumstances unless you want to buy food, you want to buy medicine, or you take care of of children or of old people or you go to work to this right well how does that work for example though like if i want to if we're locked down i mean if i'm locked down there and i want to go right now to get groceries can you go any time or is it certain times they let certain people go no it's any time but the uh, groceries are only open from i don't know maybe eight to five or to seven right. they don't have the normal schedule you know this less time uh, less of a tri- time frame there to go and buy right. you know it's not as big of a deal, like we even went today to buy from like, it's a one kilometer away from where we stay. So we have to walk for like 10, 15 minutes. It was, everything was fine, but they, it's, it's usually maybe it's a, like a security guard there that will don't let, doesn't let you go in more than like 20 people or 30 people, depending how many, how big the store is. They make you wear gloves and stuff when you go in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to wear gloves. They even have hand sanitizers. But yeah, you have to wear gloves. Do they make you wear masks too? No, 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 no. Because masks, no, only they wear masks, but usually masks are not that important because this is a virus that doesn't quite transmit to air, but more, mostly to droplets. Right, water right, droplets. very true. And and the reality is the viruses are, are so small, they'll get through most of those cheap masks anyway. Um, yeah, they. I don't think they are that effective no. as far as I've read from, from experts and so forth. Well, the gloves make sense. So, okay, so you can actually... Go any time. I mean, is there any limits or restrictions? Like, can you go just once a day? Is there a card they give you or something? Like, uh, how does that work? So people can just go to the grocery store any time. Yeah, basically. But sometimes maybe police may stop you and ask you, like, where you're going. You have to show them the receipt for, like, the store. If you went to a store, to, like, prove that. In, in Italy, I think it's even worse. But uh, even here, it might be that you need um, written like authorization a, or something an excuse or authorization whatever that you are going some places but i haven't seen seen right. this here in this town okay well that's good for people to know because i i really think uh from what i've seen uh that that's a big people are concerned with that they're afraid you know they get locked down they they're, they're going to you know be restricted to once a week or you know um, so, and of course, I know it can maybe be different, but generally these things are somewhat universal um, in, mm-hmm. how, in how they work. Uh, so that's good to know. And, and people can, you know, not worry so much uh, about that. Um, yeah, I think what what you have to keep in mind is wash your hands. That's so important because yes. when you go out into a store, whatever, I mean, you, you touch, you touch the, the door handle, you touch... Even when you wear gloves, you know, before wearing gloves, you still touch stuff. And when right. you take those products at home, you, you touch them. So we are a bit obsessed with that now. And we mm-hmm. wash our hands like for at least 20 seconds every, every time we wash our hands. So it's like a proper washing of your hands. You know, that's very important to keep in mind. And you will see people in, in, in stores like today, I've seen that in supermarkets, they put not only like for cashiers, they have gloves and a mask, but they also put some almost like a pexi glass or something between you and them. So to not get in contact with them right, that much, right. you know? Yeah, I actually And they kind of force you to, yeah, they kind of force you to stay like a meter or so away. That's, I don't know, six feet or something, or three feet, something like that. But one meter, one or two meters away from each other in, in a store, you know, so. Yeah, that is, that is very important because obviously it has to get into your body. So it's important, wash your hands and be conscious to not touch your face or your mouth or those types of things. Yeah, that's very hard to do. It's just it is, very hard to do. Yeah, because people are so used to it. And again, handling yeah. your, your like your cell phones, that's something you have to remember. So if you're in the store and then you're touching oh, yeah. your cell phone, you know, I, I, first yeah. thing you I'm do... I'm washing when, my phone all the time. Exactly. First thing you do when you get home, wash your hands and, and wipe your phone down with alcohol or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. Luckily, my phone is like, a, whatever, it's waterproof and I'm, I'm washing it hey, with soap. that's great, yeah. <laughs> that's the best thing about it. Um. um so... Okay, that's good. With, that's excellent with the grocery store. Like I said, I can tell that's a big panic here and a big uncertainty that people weren't sure about. Um, and as far as your, I know 
you're restricted as you're saying. So is everyone confined to their home and yard? Basically, you're not, not allowed yet. to leave unless it's to go directly to some place, right? Yeah, if you go to again buy food, buy medicine, go to work, or you can walk the dog if you have a dog or just pets in general because they have to go out. Yeah, I saw pee. that. I read so that people were trying to like walk their cats and shit to get yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> here too, you know, you can see people with dogs like quite quite often. So yeah, right. You can do that, of course, but you shouldn't. You should think of yourself first. You know, some some doctors said it very well. Don't think that you may catch the virus. Think that you have the virus and you shouldn't give it to others. Right. Consider yourself as infected, and then you will make yourself more cautious about what you do. Yeah, that's very true. Right. Right. Yeah, you feel uh, more alert already. You know, more aware. Um. So you yeah, are- and be cautious of old people because old people are going to be impacted the, the most out of this. So, for example, my parents. My parents had quarantined at home for the past 11 or so days. They didn't go out at all. And I don't interact with them because I am a bit concerned not to because I still go out to buy stuff. Right. Sometimes I buy stuff for them, you know, and stuff like that. But I, I keep the distance with right. them. Yeah, you know, very We important. need to kind of protect them. Exactly, Tio. Very important. And, of course, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure people have uh, some read up to some point on this. Um, it is definitely... Um, uh, more for the elderly and people with respiratory problems, but there are an increasing number of cases of younger people that are getting it uh-huh. and, and are get very bad off. So again, like you're saying, act like you have it. Think about those, those people that are more vulnerable as, as far as distancing and you know, wiping stuff maybe before you give it to them. But that doesn't mean that anybody is actually out in the clear and immune. Yeah, no, you know, you really because, have to think about it. Right, man. And you also have to, to not consider that, okay, it's going to be a lockdown for a while and so forth. Well, it ca- it can still keep on going, you know. Do, I mean, even in Spain, I think they, they prolonged the period for 15 more days and so forth. This can last for a few months. So don't, I've, I've heard an expert saying that uh, in the best case scenario, it will take between six months to a year for things to get back to normal. So it will take a while, probably. Exactly, Tio. Yeah. Um, yeah, right, man. And, and again, that, that uncertainty of everything, you know, of the virus, of being locked down, how long are we going to be locked down, what does it entail, which is what I'm trying to do here, at least clear some air for people with that. But, right, it's it's that's what's causing the, the overall fear because of the unknown, you know. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, man, that's, that's what people really have to remember. Look, we're going to get through this. It's just one of those things, you know, you got to take the precautions. Mainly this stuff is just as precaution to, to stop and slow the spread, you know. Um, and, and Absolutely. yeah, man. And, and, you know, focus on some other things now that the, you got time together or time to, you know, do some things you, you know, like I was just watching Abby Martin the other day talking about she's painting some stuff now that she hasn't painted, you know, I mean, just do some stuff that you don't normally do find something new, you know? Um, yeah, it can be a bit tricky, of course, because, uh, like I am very used to stay at home and work from home is for mm-hmm. perfectly fine, but if you know this at the back of your mind that you are not allowed to go out, you know, it's a bit like... Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. It's of a weight on your leg. Like, yeah. Oh, I, I cannot go out. Yeah, I know what you mean, right? Uh, yeah, it's almost like I'm claustrophobic. If I'm confined somewhere, if I know I can get away, I'm all right. If I feel like I'm stuck, I start freaking out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, okay, so you're we got the grocery store. Uh, you pretty much are confined unless you're going somewhere or walking your goat or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and are there? I guess there are roadblocks and checkpoints and stuff like that around. Oh yeah, there. depending on the on the region. I don't know. I haven't seen them directly because I just we cannot go anywhere. But right, right. I know for sure yeah, that there are all kinds of checkups point. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, I saw a little. Uh, short uh video where some guy was riding by on a bike or something and the damn police they were chasing him on a horse <laughs> i know i know that's what i said man it was it was a cool clip but i don't know what the hell was going on but i haven't seen that here right <laughs> no nah, it was it was in a little article i read last night you know they put the little twitter video on there but yeah they did man they started galloping after his ass so i don't know um uh but that's another thing you know in that article, actually, I read, and of course this will vary, but supposedly the person was over there in Spain, and they said that if you get caught 
um, you know, being out when you're not supposed to, basically, that you can get a fine of up to, of course, it's ridiculous, but up to 600,000 euros. Have you heard yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. They said it's usually maybe it's a few hundred euros as far as I've read. Right, right. But yeah, they gave some fines as what I, from what I've read and so forth. Yeah, this could happen probably. And mm -hmm. you have to think about the fact that these people may not be in the mood to put up with your explanations if you, if, right. if they catch you with something because they are stressed and so forth. Exactly. You should also understand them a bit because probably it's very stressful for them too. They have to, you know, many people hate police. I do too many times, especially right. when you see these clips with police abuse. But you have to think that they also have to go through a bit of a shit situation now because they have to interact with people and it's right. a lot of stress. And it will be the same in the in the U.S., I'm, I'm sure. You're looking at how fast the numbers are growing in the U.S. is going to probably be. I would be shocked if it would not be, you know, in, in, a, in a very bad situation. Yeah, man, exactly. Well, again, that's why, uh, you know, I wanted to do this with you real quick because uh, I, I, it's probably going to come to a lockdown. Exactly. You know, um, and so uh, that's, uh, you know, the uncertainty there. And and again, right. You know, that's a good point you made to you that this is a very unique thing in a lot of ways. And one of the ways being that essentially most of the world is going through this. Um, you know, to some degree, I mean, you know, even like you said, even people that, you know, the cops, everybody is, it's, it's a different thing that's happening. So everybody's naturally going to be feeling and experiencing different emotions and, and stuff. So, so don't, and one thing is like, just, I want to mention this because yeah. people may not understand, but just don't buy masks because if you do that, then people who need them, they don't, they won't have them. So people do that all the time. They buy masks. They don't need them. Only if you deal with some people who are infected and so forth. And they will, you'll create a really shortage, a big shortage of, of that. So I think yes. that's important for people to understand. It's very important to you. And that, that of course, the initial panic um, uh, with people buying up all that stuff like masks and whatnot. And then the people, like you said, who really needed these things weren't able to get them. Um, and that's the panic I hope is starting to somewhat subside. It needs to. Um, but yeah, people got to remember this stuff because like I said, if you're younger and you get it, yeah, it might be bad off and whatnot, but still, if you're a younger, healthier, whatever, you don't need a damn mask. Just be smart and in distance and wash your hands and stuff like that and leave the mask and things like that for the people, the elderly and the people who take care of elderly and parents and stuff who they, who need it. Right. You know, we are all in this together. I mean, so it's that's what it is, man. Yeah, it's a bizarre situation. Yeah, it's very bizarre. I mean, of course, it's unusual. And um, I mean, if you feel like you will feel it when you will be probably in this kind of situation because it will come into the U.S. Uh, like even today going out and so forth, you are almost so conscious about touching stuff and mm -hmm. you become a bit like those people who are germaphobes, you know. Right, right. I'm touching this. I don't have to touch my face now, you know. Everything is a bit bizarre. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, well, in this case, it's almost, I guess, better to be a little, you know, worried like that than unworried because uh, then, then you'll be conscious of not touching your face and all that. And another thing I read was, I don't know if it's true, um, that only one member of a household is allowed allowed out at any time. I've read, I've heard about that too, but uh, I've seen people here like, not expecting it if that's the case, you know, so right. I'm not sure about that. I'm not uh, sure. Okay, I got you. Yeah, well, that's fine. Um, I mean, well, that's the thing, you know, if they don't issue any kind of, I don't know, paper or something, how are they going to, you know, like, for example, if a mom leaves with her son, the mom might have an ID saying that's her house, but the son isn't going to have an ID, you know, so that's what I mean. How do you really regulate that? I don't know, but... Um, and yeah, we take our IDs with us if we go out all the time, just in case. So we have our IDs yeah, in case they stop us. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's probably a good idea at this point um, if we get locked down to do that, just to clear as much air as possible if you get stopped. And so this is, you kind of answered this, but so are you, nobody is allowed to be in any kind of public space pretty much at all right like you can't go to a park you can't go no, no. okay no no because okay. that would be like uh, that would be the worst probably that's the reason why they 
closed such, such things in the first place, like saying people don't go to work if the work is not essential and so forth, mm-hmm. to also limit this this public gatherings because it will spread a lot to this public gatherings. You know, it's quite and people should also understand that such measures are necessary to not overall overload the healthcare system. Right. Because I mean, they won't stop the infections; they'll just slow them down. But it's important because. Else they will get overwhelmed. I don't know how now is the, for example, the healthcare system here. Because if I want to go to the hospital, I don't think I can go to the hospital anywhere or make an appointment anywhere. Probably they are so busy that. Well, I can tell you, I I, I quote a little bit here. Um, uh, let's see, the death toll in Spain rose by 514 people this just Tuesday, two days ago, to 2,696, with nearly 40,000 infections. The Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, said the worst quote is yet to come. And uh, for a strained healthcare system that lacks enough protective gear for the workers, and this is this is the last thing here. Um, no, they're definitely overwhelmed because... Oh, yeah. It and now today it's even worse, yeah. Today it's in 3,400 total well, deaths. Well, they started using hotels and an yeah. exhibition center. Or ex, oh, yeah, yeah. exhibition center with 5,500 beds they've set up as a makeshift hospital in Madrid. And they they actually just uh, yesterday, the day before, have used have incorporated an ice skating rink as a makeshift morgue. Yeah, yeah. Because I've, they I've need to keep that, the yeah. bodies cold. So they're putting them. They said they're putting a plexiglass thing down on the ice so the bodies don't touch the ice. But hmm. that's I mean, that's kind of. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, but that's kind of creepy, you know. That yeah, you have to understand that uh, Spain has one of the best healthcare systems in in the world with Italy and so forth, and they are very centralized, very organized, very like, even digitized. Yeah, mm-hmm. quite, doing quite well, yeah, but even they are, are completely overwhelmed by by this situation. And I was thinking in the U.S. with so many healthcare providers, you know, and being so. Like so many companies providing healthcare, it might make it even more difficult to deal with this because yes. they have to organize all of those cats, you know. Exactly, Tio. That's a good point that's coming up now. Um, you know, we won't get into this now, but basically some of these candidates and whatnot and people have been pushing for Medicare for all and, and health care, you know, basically one system, kind of like you have in these other countries. And that is one of the issues, main issues that's happening now, because exactly, you have all so many different providers and so many different insurance companies, which of course, all about profit. And so, you know, it's all mixed up. And so, yeah, now it's like chaos because you can't just kind of organize one system. You're trying to organize thousands of different systems. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely, uh, that's one of the things creating havoc here with the healthcare system, but you made a good point T.O. And that's what people again need to understand that, that I, I'm sure a lot do. Um, it, it's that it's that when people are getting sick and they're having to be hospitalized, there's not enough space. There's not enough beds. There's not enough incubators. There's not enough people. They said 10% of people in Spain of the healthcare providers, doctors and nurses are infected right now. So then you yeah. have that happening and then they're out of the fight, you know? So yeah, it's even not only they're out of the fight, they're the ones that you have to fight for, for some of them, right? you know, right. they You're- put even more of a toll. On the healthcare system, right, and and you know, uh, and it's not just that they're okay. Well, we're going to use a hotel and and all these places, and then it's going to be okay because they're not. When you don't have enough ventilators and these types of things that you need for this virus, they are literally having to choose who's going to die. Who who? And that's a mandate I read that that they um, have already told the healthcare establishment there. You have to take oh, yeah. the most the most likely one to survive, like a younger person or whatever, and treat them. Oh yeah, there are some videos here in Spain with some doctors like crying because they're like showcasing how their their bosses were telling them, "Look, you have to choose people younger than than sixty five. Exactly. Uh, what is over sixty five? They, as far as I've read, they they anesthetize them or something to just die slowly or something because mm-hmm. they couldn't save them. Like to have a list of a uh, like." The decent death to not suffer that much. So that's cruel, you know, in, in today's like 2020, like, like it's, it's not like 1920s, you know? Right. It's, right. Yeah. And of course that's a whole issue that, you know, I know you're aware of, and I'd, I'd love to get into obviously about how the system is, 
um, not, you know, really made for this stuff. It's made for profit and, and those types of things. And if it was a different world we lived in, this would be, you know, very much under control right now. Um, but, you know, again, just to stress it, since that's what this is about, that, that you know, that's, you got to think of all that stuff, people, that, you know, it, it sounds, you know, oh, I'm young. I don't care if I get it. Yeah, well, you're the asshole that's going to get it and then go to the hospital and then they're going to choose your dumb ass because you're younger. And, you know, th- I mean, that's the reality of the situation. So it's not about being in fear and whatnot. It's just about being smart and realizing what's happening and just just be safe and smart about it, you know. Um, yeah, and everyone has parents and grandparents and so forth. You have exactly. to be careful with that. Yeah, exactly. So uh, last thing I think, Tio, I wanted to ask you was, what if you, I mean, we, again, we kind of covered this, but what if you have to go, I don't know if you'll if you'll know, but it, it, you can only go to essential places. But what if, say, you know, a lot of people have a husband and wife uh, split and they have kids in different places. What if I had need to go check on my son or my daughter is that considered I can do that, like drive somewhere to go check on them? Or? Probably, yes, because they say that if you, if you take care of elderly or young young or kids, whatever, you know. They allow that. You should be able to, at least here, from what I've heard, yes. Yeah, probably they're not as, as draconian, you know. Right. But they just want to make sure, probably their main concern is not to have lots of people outside, you know. So just right. stay inside because it's... That's not good, and especially for places that are very crowded, like Madrid or Barcelona, you know, not for these little towns where I live. Yeah, I agree. I, I do think that's probably the main thing. And same with the, the ridiculous $600,000 mm-hmm. euro fine, you know, which, by the way, translates to 648666 <laughs> U.S. dollars. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's just to deter people, you know. Yeah, absolutely, and, absolutely. And say, oh, my God, that's ridiculous. I'm not going out, you know, or something. Uh but well, so, most people should understand. I mean, in Spain, probably even if you don't hear about these kinds of things, you you should. You, I think you understand. It's the situation is it's critical. So you are doing, not going to be a jackass to go out. Maybe there are some jackass people here and there, but right. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. I agree. Well, uh, Tio, I I really appreciate you taking time to talk with us and give us a little better idea here of, um, you know, kind of what we can anticipate. I I think the big thing, I mean, other than some of the little things we covered also, or I would say little, but, you know, because people don't know about them, but is the is the grocery, you know, I mean, because you can manage. Okay, it sucks to be inside, you know, but, you know, you can kind of go to someplace essential. There's no restrictions as far as days and times for the most part. Um You know, so you can go get food, you can do these things, you can walk your dog or your goat or whatever, Uh, you know, but seriously, check on, you know, um, your, you know, people, your family members and and stuff like that. So uh, the main thing, like you said, is just not to be out in social places and touching and, you know, all these things. And yeah, and think of yourself as almost as like you have the virus, you know, put that in your mind. You have the virus, you have to isolate yourself and do your best to not give it to others. If you think think like this, then you will be more careful, I would say, right. whatever you do. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and the thing, you know, to keep in mind is the sooner this stuff starts going down, the sooner things go back to what, and I don't know, normal is the right word because things weren't normal to begin with, but, um, you know, back to where it's like, yeah, more freedom and moving around or whatever. Um, yeah, it but, will last probably this thing. It, it could last. It can even rebound and all of that, this infection. So I'm curious to see where it will go. I'm uh, very curious, right? It's totally unknown. And, and yeah, the reality is, like you said, uh, people need to brace for it. It's probably going to be at least at least a couple months. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, because they have to try to find some kind of vaccine or treatment. And that stuff takes time to not only find, but then they have to to run animal tests and then they have to run human tests and then it has to be mass produced. And, you know, so you're, you're talking some months there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Between 12 and 18 months as far as I've read, that's how much it takes for a vaccine to go from zero to production. Well, well, Tio, again, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and and give us some insight uh, for that. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Well, stay safe, man. And uh, best of luck to you guys over there. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, man. Take it easy. Okay. All right. 
Bye. Bye. Well, I hope this helped everyone understand what to anticipate and expect. This is a novel virus that spreads easily, so just learn the facts, be smart, and safe. We will get through this, and it will come to pass eventually. Hope you'll tune in for the next episode of the All Radio Show. We are one.